All right, happy Friday and welcome back to New Wave Traders. We're going to be diving into just Bitcoin in today's video, taking a look at the bullish and the bearish counts from a macro perspective, and then we're going to be diving into the smaller time frames and taking a look at the current correction that we're dealing with right here and the overall smaller time frame counts and the invalidations for those as well. I'll share with you guys how I'm planning to navigate these uh, current market conditions and show you my potential trade setups that are going to be incoming as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. We're going to be starting off on the daily time frame here, taking a look at the order blocks across the board for Bitcoin first. So I've got bullish order blocks below me, and then the red, I've got bearish order blocks. You can see how we've reacted at these two bearish order blocks that we've been uh, targeting since we were in this rally towards the upside. This was a very critical zone for us to come back and be able to retest from a higher time frame standpoint. And you can see how we've reacted around that. With the point of breakdown order block, we consolidated that resistance there, pushed through it, back tested it. It, and that brought us up into the bearish order block here where we pierced through and took the liquidity on the top side of that bearish order block. We saw a heavy rejection off of that right there, and that's leading us into where price is currently at right now. So what does this mean for the larger time frame counts that are in play right now? Well, we've basically got three bullish opportunities towards the upside, and we've got one bearish opportunity. Now, these vary in degrees, which means that when we look at the impulse waves, we've got an extremely bullish impulse wave, we've got a mediocre imp uh, impulse wave, and then we've got a corrective count on how we can climb up correctively. This will feel a lot more bearish as it'll have a heavier drawdown to lower price targets of about $31,000 before pivoting back towards the upside. And then we've got a count that will bring us down to new lows. Let's break this down a little bit further. Our first impulse wave is one that's pretty mediocre. This is where we completed a third wave up to our bearish order block here, and we're looking to consolidate in between our point of breakdown order block, which now flips to a breaker order block, should become support, and we consolidate and contract price in between these two zones here. We then pierce through, giving us a fifth wave, and this would allow for another ABC correction to come into play thereafter something like this, and then a larger move towards the upside for continuation of that bull market or overall a larger ABC zigzag. All right. So, and we'll go down to the smaller time frames and look at this correction here, but let's get a, a nice broad idea as to where these counts are looking to pivot at. And a lot of these really line up very nicely with these order blocks, uh, primarily down at about 38K and another one down at 35K with a lot of confluence coming in at that 38K level for a bounce. Our second impulse wave here is one that's much more bullish. It's known as a one, two, one, two pattern. And that one, two, one, two pattern is the green one, two here, and then the red one, two. And the secondary wave two in red likes to pull back ideally to a 0 0.382 fib level and definitely no lower than the 0.5 here. These match up extremely well with our bullish order blocks as well for continuation of the upside. So again, looking at that 38K level for that first pivot zone uh, for a potential buying opportunity. And I'll show you how I plan on navigating this on the smaller time frames and which time frame is the most important time frame to be paying attention to in this drawdown here as well. Okay. The third count that we're looking at is moving up correctively. This is where things get a little bit more bearish. And if you notice the difference between the two counts so far, the two impulse waves bounce off of 38K. That's that order block right there. And they definitely don't come back down underneath 35K, right? The fourth wave can't come back into wave one territory and so forth. So if we lose 38K, probability starts to shift that we're actually moving towards this X wave support level next. Now, if we get a wick through down to 35K and a strong pivot back up, that does support the 1212 count. Again, I'll throw that on here so you guys can see that. The 1212 can come down to the 0.5 there and still pivot towards the upside and be an extremely bullish count, right? This is the most bullish count that we have available in the market right now. And it has the opportunity to pivot at 38 k or even 35k both are acceptable but the better spot to pivot would be at 38k all right whereas the impulse one if i bring that back this fourth wave here really has no reason to come all the way down to 35k that's an extreme drawdown for a fourth wave and our third wave rally here only hit a 1.618 extension on linear scale so it wasn't even that strong of a third wave move all right so that's the difference between those two impulse waves and in comparison to the x wave drawdown here where the x wave comes back to our 
support down at about $31,000. This would continue moving up in an ascending channel that you can see on the screen here. But it would get pretty hairy here on this drawdown. It would be very concerning for most people. This is still an acceptable area for us to pivot. Things get really bearish, though, if we cannot take this huge demand zone that we've created down here, right? We have this huge range between 31K all the way down to 25K that we consolidated at. And there's no reason from the bulls that we shouldn't be able to use that previous highs there of that range, 31K, as support. And if we're not able to do that and we really start to break down into this range, break underneath 31 to 30K, that's where things start to flip to the end of a bull market. And we look instead at continuation of our bear market from over here. So, and that's where I'd look for an impulse wave towards the downside or another leg that simply looks like this one over here, whether that's an ABC or WXY, doesn't really matter. We're just simply looking for a partner leg from this drop from 69,000 all the way down to 15,000. We would look for that equivalent leg over here as well. And that'd likely bring us into $12,000 uh, range there. Okay. So again, I'm not worried about this one here until the other three counts invalidate themselves. And it will be a stair step process, right? Impulse one and impulse two will invalidate themselves first. Uh, with impulse two, no, impulse one being the one that invalidates first for a fourth wave. Okay, so let's go down and talk about this smaller time frame correction in here then. And we're going to move all the way down to the one hour time frame to break this up a little bit. All right, so right now, what seems to be the most probable uh, outlook here is an ABC correction. Okay, and that ABC should I usually get a one-to-one -one extension of this leg over here. Now, there's a couple different ways to count this. We can either have an expanded flat in this area right here, or we can have a five-wave move. What starts with five waves has to end with five waves. So, and we do have a five-wave structure right here in this current drop right now. But the thing about this is that it doesn't meet the minimum qualification for a C wave done like that. And so we need a larger leg here, which tells me that this would be the start of something towards the downside. We would get a pivot like this, A, B, C up, and then a three, a four, and a five. If I draw that extension for the expanded flat, my one-to-one -one comes all the way in at 37,491, and this is on logarithmic scale. If we change that up a little bit, it actually drops a little bit lower down to 36.9K. So I'll be paying attention to logarithmic first, just because that target will get hit first in this scale here. All right. So you can see the symmetry here is starting to fall off. In other words, we're taking a quite quite a long time to drop down relative to this drop over here. This was a really fast drop, and we're looking for equality with that leg as well. Our B wave was very shallow here, which opened up the opportunity that maybe this was still running inside of an expanded B wave. And that is still an option that's on the table, but has drastically decreased, mainly because of the five wave move right here. Maybe I can draw my A wave over like this, or maybe it just stays like this and we deal with a complex structure coming down instead of an impulse, but it definitely comes off more of an impulse wave than it does a B wave. So this is drastically decreased in extending out our B wave here. And we're mainly dealing with the B wave being completed, which opens up a more bearish option here. And that br brings us down into again, that 38K level uh, to 37.5K, which is a, bullish order block that I'm interested in, and it matches up with the one-to-one -one extension. The shortest target that I would allow would be here at 39,740, okay? And the way in which we'd likely hit that is finishing this move off as a fourth wave still, and then a fifth wave, and now we can do another A, B, C back up. All right, so if we zoom into this count here to show what that looks like, you would deal with a impulse wave like one, two, three, four, and a five like so, okay? So given the rally, the V-cut strength that we're seeing right here, that looks nice right now, but we really haven't broken up over any sort of a bearish order block. So the previous fourth wave here. So a lot of times these can just show up as running flats still, all right? But in either case, uh, we are looking for 
a pivot to come into play here shortly. Either that's going to be at 39,740 or down here at 37,838 to 37,513. All right, so this would be my ideal area for a buy opportunity. I'd look for reversal divergence on a one hour time frame down here at this 37.5K level. And then I would utilize a stop underneath that. So long as the reversal divergence is present, I'd, I'd have my stop two lows back underneath 35,630. And I'd look for this to break back up to retest our point of breakdown order block and fill this gap up here, this inefficiency at 45, 46K, let's just call it. All right. So the risk reward ratio on that would be three to one. And uh, so if you what that means is if you risk $100 on this trade here, you'd have the potential to make $300 on it. So anything over a two to one risk reward ratio, I like. Um, and we can always look to tighten that up too with other manners that I keep you updated inside of the Discord. So if you want more intraday updates and access to all my live trades, then you can join us in our group coaching Discord. In order to get access into that, you need to be a member of the New Wave Academy. Um, and that will come with lifetime access with the current deal that I've got going on. Otherwise, it's normally $100 a month. So you can check that out and learn more about it in a free training I've put together at tradethewave.com. And in that training, it'll share with you the four components uh, to create the most effective trading systems and how I've leveraged those four components to create the new wave system, okay, and why it's superior to others. So definitely check out that free training. Again, at the end of it, you'll get a discount into the new wave academy. Plus, it will come with as a free bonus, a lifetime access into the group coaching, which normally costs $100 a month. All right. So these are all the... Uh, patterns that we're looking for on Bitcoin and all the way down to the smaller time frames, and how I'm looking to overall leverage this. I think the best buying opportunity is going to be if we come back down to that 37.5K to 38K and we have reversal divergence in that demand zone. Otherwise, here in the short term, it's a little bit messy and I'd like it to clean up to give us a higher probability trade setup and pattern overall. I do see a scalping opportunity down here in the shorter time frame. Um, but it's not something I'll go over on this stream here as we're just focused a little bit more on multi-day all the way up to macro um, perspectives here. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And I hope to see you in our Monday live stream at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Until then, enjoy the weekend and much love, fam.